thank you, thank you. 20 years ago when I started my business, I knew the kind of speaker I wanted to be. I knew I wanted to be the inspirational speaker at an event, the motivational speaker. I knew I wanted to be the one that was touching people's hearts. And yet all the speakers I'd seen had either written the best-selling book, had built a business, a multi-million dollar business, they had won a gold medal, they had nearly died and come back to life. <laughs> and so I thought, well, what, why would anybody want to see Julie Cross? What is Julie Cross going to offer them? So I ha didn't have a profile to bring to the stage. So I had to make the stage what I became famous for. I had to make sure that I had my stagecraft sorted out. I had to work on that. Because even if I was just delivering training to a hairdressing team in the area of retail or consultation, I needed to make sure they didn't just hear my message, that they felt it that they went away inspired to put the message into action and make it happen. So for me, it was always all about my stagecraft, working on that, working on my storytelling, my humour, so that I became famous in that area for speaking. And so that was my number one thing. And I still say today, if I get on stage in front of an audience and I'm not inspiring them to want to be better, do better, and to feel my message and to walk away wanting to tell somebody else what they learned and felt and then wanting to tell somebody else about me, then I haven't done a good enough job. And I've, I've let an opportunity go. My whole business for the last 20 years has been word of mouth. Somebody tell somebody else about what I'm doing. And, and then I've listened to my audiences along the way. So the reason that I, I started my public shows was because my audience told me they wanted a public show. I'd have people leaving conferences saying, how can my husband see your message? How can my teenagers get to see your message? They that were telling me, Julie, it's time to do a show. I didn't start a show and then try to get the people to come. The people told me they wanted a show. And isn't that, that's rolling with the, t the, the currents and they're trying to roll against it. So I listened to what they were saying. It was when they said to me just recently, Julie, when are you going to write your book? Okay, they've been saying it for about three years. <laughs> and so she finally writes her book and the tribe are ready to buy the book. I don't have to find people to buy the book. The people are there wanting to buy the book. And for me, I found that a much a much a, a gentler road to go on. It's, it's a flowing road to go on, a flowing place to be. When you're doing your best and then you're listening to your audience, letting you know what they want from you next. This is where I think you should go next. This is what I think you should do. The reason I started wearing sequins was because somebody in an audience <laughs> said to me once, Julie, I saw these sparkly sh shirts hanging up at the shop and they just reminded me of you and your personality. Listen to the whispers. That's my audience telling me that that's how they see me. This has been one of my number one best decision I ever made was to wear sequins. It took some courage, I can tell you. <laughs> 7 a.m. in the morning at the airport. <laughs> I see what they're thinking. What are you left over from last night? Love, eh? Big night. <laughs> so it takes courage to do it. But let's keep finding that courage and owning your space. And I truly believe that when you do go with that flow, you find your uniqueness on the stage. And the other quick thing is start in the industry that knows you. I started in the hairdressing industry because that was my background. You do well in that industry. They have partners that work in other industries. Suddenly you have new clients. Thank you so much. I hope that was helpful.